Vi has risen through the roof of priority here for BLG for Shun as this facilitation jungle and, and playing through his lanes. And I think this is such a different look for Shun going into a year. Yeah, it definitely is. But BLG will be very, very happy to snap up the original trio they had on the opposite side. Yeah. And will FPX just take the on R3? Because this is definitely going to be a Nami coming off of BLG. It wouldn't be anything else. Uh, so will we just get a rerun effectively of the same drafts? Or will Haya actually try and take up something else in the jungle pool? But I just feel like Rukon works well into what BLG has, right? So <laughs> it's it's such a peculiar one. Broke, you want to see... Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it is kind of broken, so something needs to be fixed. Oh I God. just don't know whether or not it's the jungle side of things or not. So same first three picks. Uh, it's a bit resident Sleeper, but we'll see if we get some changes... Uh, in the solo is, lanes. As is this literally just them saying, like, if we didn't miss position at that level, that early level in bot lane, the game's completely different, even though we gave the kill top lane? I, like, I feel like at this point, that's what they're trying to say here. It could be. I mean, I'm not too sure. Like, even for FPX, like, small adaptation changes, I wouldn't have even minded seeing Civic come out as opposed to the Zeri. True. Just simply on the on the fact of it's a first pick buy. If you can alleviate what she does simply by pressing a button and having a Yumi on your back, I feel like there's a lot of value there, but they are very much uh, set in their ways for this draft. I feel like having Zeri yeah. is definitely the better answer. Uh, and I just have to assume that changes will come to the solo lanes, but if FPX can afford to, you know, take a Silas blind again, I'm sure they'll do it. Uh, no questions asked, and BLG will <laughs> change things up. So the Galio is what actually ends up being thrown uh, out right. here. So what will the adaptation be now for Yagao in the mid lane uh, as I'm he wondering if, to find something new in his pool? I mean, at this point, like, I just want to see more comfort for FTX, right? Like, I wouldn't yeah. mind. I don't know how the matchup is. I'm just going to go off my instincts here. I would love to see, like, Shalau who comfortable on the Jace, on the Camille, if, if it comes through, right? Things like this that he feels confident on. Going against a standout top lane like Bin, that is so, so important, especially with the way game one went. Uh, we do have a lot of focus from BLG towards this mid lane matchup, though. Syndra and Ari are on the band table. Though. Yeah, so more mid focus, which could put some pressure on FPX to just lock in their mid laner here. Give Charlotte who the top lane counter pick R5, but it's going to be the opposite way around. They'll take up it's the salty run back. now. So it is basically, from FPX's point of view, a salty run back at the moment. Things will have to change for BLG from the mid lane perspective, but Bin toying with the idea of the Gwen. We've seen this matchup. Uh, not just take Camille be... again it, like you, you honestly could, very happily and <laughs> I'll be real I'd prefer it. if the Sibir was on the table I'd say yeah go ahead take Gwen but I feel like for the sake of being able to have an additional lockdown button for these area I'll definitely prefer the Camille but in terms of what they provide for the laning phase and the scaling aspect I think it's more or less the same really strong side lane scaling uh, happy and comfortable to deal with Cassante inside the lane. But of course, Gwen brings a lot more AoE damage to the table in those mm -hmm. team fights. And speaking of AoE damage in those team fights, Victor currently being hovered, potentially being toyed around with for Yagao's. Oh, nice. Swap over to Azir. Hey, we get the Yagao Azir. Terrifying in its own right. And now with the new meta, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays it out, right? This oh. man known for his Azir, and we get okay. the response from Care. It is the Cassidin that has been making waves because of the item builds that have just worked so well into his current structure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Aroa Archangels, baby. It's, uh, I'll complain about it once. I'll get my one run over. It's broken. I hope it gets changed. But... For the sake of Kassadin in this game, it's going to do wonders for him. The matchup is kind of one where Yagao is going to be afforded a lot of early priority, right? But the point is, Kassadin can, you know, spec into things like Fleet, Second Wind, Doran Shield, and he just gets to sit there and farm for free and convince, right? Constantly shove in the mid lane, ensure that Care doesn't get to move anywhere, and pick up priority for Shun to kind of just get free reign. And also, we'll have to keep our eyes on Shun to see what he's getting done on the map with what should be very consistent early uh, mid lane priority uh two you can try and shut him down in the early stages before he hits rift ward right once he has that level six available you kind of need chun's ultimate expended more times than not to lock down the cassadin mm -hmm. uh, or three just entirely ignore him and try and slam the side lanes which you've got really good matchups to do that with so blg have the option still of it in terms of what the lane actually does itself it's just a farm fest at the end of the day the <laughs> The means to whatever the end will be will be CS, 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 farm, farm, farm. Mm -hmm. That's more about Keg, whether or not Keg gets to those important item breakpoints. The Roa, the Archangel Staff, 
those two items being completed will spell the beginning of late game team fighting dominance for FPX if they can get there. All right, we got a little bit of uh, setup at least for both sides. Both junglers stop starting on opposite sides of the map. And I want to pick your brain here, Miss Jamana, because we are getting to the last day before we have a long break. Before I, I think another patch comes through. Have we cracked the color meta of jungle? Is it blue, green, red situationally? We've seen a little <laughs> bit of changes here. Do we have the color code, Jamada? Do we have it? Oh, did you, did you, I mean, did you it, get it? It feels like it feels like junglers are still kind of deciding. In my head, right? Green is just the most broken. No matter what. You, <laughs> okay. Like, okay. It, it it's it's a free shield and free tenacity and stats, which the other smites just don't really give you enough of. You know, blue free movement speed and brushes, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you can smite champions, etc. I just uh, the other bonuses just don't really strike me as as strong <laughs> as what okay. green gives you. Um, I, mean, I know that it's like situationally go red on Maokai just because of the yeah. sheer amount of damage you're putting out and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I think yeah, like you say, there's a couple of situational smites where some smites mm -hmm. work better than others in certain champions. Uh, but I especially feel like the pro player, right? You're seeing so many of these champions like Wu Kong, uh, like Vi, the ones that are wanting to go in, disrupt. Green smite just works really well for them. Speaking of oh, going in and disrupting, in. Shun he snuck is in. looking. <laughs> All right, level three for both. I don't know if this is a fight he necessarily wins, but he's going to try to do so. He does have to press the attack as well, so extra damage there. But both junglers kind of walking away from this, at least scuffle, for a little bit longer. So Shun actually winning out on the pressure game here early on, trying to keep his name on the mind of everybody on FPS. So he delays the clear. Uh, how yeah. And it does kind of signal to Elk and Om that, yeah, you're going to have to deal with Wukong very shortly. But even though BLG had lane priority, the issue is geography. So uh, LWX and Alert would have made it to that fight first, hence the disengage from Shunzen. And you can still see here in the 2v2, Elk and Om definitely in the driver's seat for now. So expect that to continue. And again, the question will be how will FPX handle the pressure on this bottom side? Match up Gwen as well in Bin's hands in the top side is going to pretty much freely scale. So, again, eyes on the FPX jungler to see what he can get done with these very, very scaly lanes. And we wanted to see how Care and Halya kind of combine in this series together against uh, maybe more stalwart mid jungle duo on the opposite side. And I don't know if we're necessarily going to get the answers to that with this matchup in specific. It definitely feels like it's going to be an opt out matchup till later on. But Halya wants to get himself onto the map and trying to go for his bot lane for Elf and On as they step up. These Zoss is utilized. The Ultra Shock laser will hit, and Halya gets in just a little bit after the flash. All right, so flash balloon on Elk Sen. Not too shabby at all. So I feel like FPX would be happy with the exchange. Though the LG definitely should have seen something coming. Uh Haya popped the plant on the way down, the vision plant. Yeah. So kind of surprised that gank even goes through. Oh, but now no. dive forward. Ignite was even blown. Just for a Scary. bit of additional damage. The thing is, it's not just the fact that they're not killing them, right? It's the fact that you have to constantly think, is Elk going to all in me right now or not? And, and I think that there just is this back and forth play happening in these duos right now in this series specifically that is uh, definitely leaning over on BLG's favor. And Shun wants to hammer that point home. Yes, he does, but he's going to be spotted on a ward. So, unfortunately, oh, an actual gank. No. Oh, no. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's fine. Hey, look at Save. that. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. All of a sudden, it's uh, it's still actually looking like it could be a 2-0. <laughs> just because of that, I like it. <laughs> just because of the, just because of the results-based analysis is what we do here at the LPL. Uh, Dragon yeah. is actually started by Shun here. He was not spotted by the Scuttlecrab because he used the Vault Breaker over the wall. So this will be a quick solo clear of the Dragon for BLG. Yep. Okay. Quick and easy for BLG. By even before the you know very buffed up. Uh, first dragon spawns. Vi was always one of those champions. I'm very happily solo a dragon, even at level 3, level 4, in this case. So, picks that one up before BLG knows that the FPX bot lane uh, had to recall. Took them not enough bad trades. So nice and easy for them. This time, not leashed over to FPX, which means that we could see an early soul. They can keep that one snowballing throughout the rest of the early game. Oh, the needlework's starting to do a little bit of work there. Doesn't hit the last proc. So now uh, we're starting to get some back and forth trading in the top side matchup between Shallow and Din. 
again, Ben just domineering game number one on the Camille. Had that early gank, really put down Shallow, who into this one, picking the Gwen. Does this matchup change in terms of how Ben should approach the lane? I know we kind of foreshadowed to it to some extent, but it, it does feel like Ben will still wrestle a lot of control unless the all out or a big monumental moment for Shallow who comes through. Yeah, so fundamentally, Kasante is still a tank. I know, guys, it's, it's weird. It's, <laughs> is he, is he is, really, I Javon? Know, I can know, you say that I with know, a straight face? In, I can, no, no, no. In lane, I know, I know. Don't, don't crucify me, I promise. You know, oh, Ooh, hey, I think, I think Shallow who was out on Mana. I think he popped the biscuits late, otherwise that ult should have gone through. A really quick flash from Bin. He still operates as a tank, so he still loses to champions that uh, bust around tanks. As uh, speaking of getting busted around, God. how yeah, dude, uh, takes so much damage. Like yeah, he, I think it was the red buff and Vi at the same time. PTA, don't forget as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the auto proc, so it's a massive chunk. So bursted out, how is going to lose his red buff almost certainly. And on the top side, pressure starting to cascade a little bit, right? You can see even your gal could potentially move off that mid lane wave if he wants to. He's about to shove that one in almost certainly. Throws the thumbs up. Oh, There's shit. a slight discrepancy he right now. He doesn't have smite. Yeah, yep. so how you get it. Nice and easy for Halya. Won't lose both those camps. But uh, yeah, TLDR has a jungle interaction interrupted the point. Cassante will still lose two tank busting champions. Like that. Mm. Camille, stuff like Gwen, stuff like Gangplank, which after Chinese New Year break, uh, with 13 point two changes i expect to see more of pirate <laughs> in the top lane i'm sure we will well, almost certainly i did actually see they are nerfing gangplank preemptively which is good because having second item ie is not going to be balanced for that champion <laughs> in the slightest with the way that he currently works so very excited to see what they change about him with what should be his inevitable introduction to the map as elk just going to chase off lwx with his culling. Could even just take a reset. Is he going to go towards Crux? He's just waiting for the wave. So, big to. difference from uh, this game into last game is the fact that BLG themselves have had that 100% objective control last time we got the early uh, Rift Hero from FPX, but this time around, Shun making a note to get all the objectives earlier on. Now we'll see if he unlocks these lanes. Last time around, he was getting those level three ganks. He was playing really aggressively. This time it's more jungle aggression focused oh, and maybe even bot focused as uh, he gets spotted out by that quick little ward from LWX. And uh, with how yeah on the bottom side as well, I think there is a little bit of response to be able to come out of FPX. Yeah, and I like that you mentioned the 100% objective control. Shun just this time a lot more on top of that one. We've been having such a hard winning top side matchup and consistent priority was just able to leverage the time uh, so that he bought from his own invade. To be fair, so yeah, really good stuff. From Two of the them actually. Game, like you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I really want to have him probably just unlock Elk again, right? I think you could, in all fairness, go towards the mid lane with his Rift Herald. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but we saw what Elk was able to do from a massive lead, even though it hasn't been afforded to yeah. him this time. Uh, in the 2v2, I think just giving him that extra bit of gold can always go to a distance in securing a major lead. Yeah, and I, I want to talk about Shun, the man on your screen, a little bit. Uh, I have obviously, obviously have a little bit of bias. Uh, I'm a big Shun fan, but it's been so incredible to watch this guy's growth as a player within multiple teams, IG as a whole. This man played between the shy and rookie, and maybe it wasn't the brandest of moments for that IG roster, but to be able to play with the oh, likes of these, oh. and now Bin and Yagao, and now focusing on the Shalau, who making sure to give the resources to Bin, Shun has found a home, and it just feels damn good, Jamada. Talk about the best way to have a point set up for you than just seeing Shun <laughs> give... It's all uh, part of the plan. It's all part, it's of, the all part of the plan. It's, it's the, uh, the cost of blessing as it were. <laughs> uh, Never heard of that one before. I like that. <laughs> I want to make lesson. that more popular. Right? <laughs> hey, me too, man. But, you know, uh, cost of curse, it's just so powerful. You know? yeah, the, really. the witches are working their magic consistently to make that one work. Uh, but BLG shouldn't, like you say, multiple rosters, always been the bright spot. Open. Like, how do you go from between the shy and rookie, now you got Ben and you got, like, it is incredible, man. This guy is surrounded by talent, and now he's finding his own in terms of 
he's not just playing the Nidalees, the Kindreds, the aggressive picks. He's not just playing the Graves, things like that. He's playing the Vi to set up Ben and Yagao. I think that's, again, I know I've harped on it a lot, but just incremental growth from this guy who has been trying to make a name since like, splashing onto the scene on IG. Absolutely. And consistently having those solid laners will always help you as a jungler facilitate whatever yeah, style will. play you want to <laughs> implement. I'll tell you firsthand as a jungler, my brief stints as a semi pro player, it was always lovely having better laners and Shun has definitely felt the pleasures of that quite consistently. And again, it will only facilitate his growth in the long term. I know you're massive, massive. Shun fan, no secret, of course. <laughs> no secret. No secret. No uh, secret at all. I do wonder though. I, Rift Herald's coming up. I'm gonna guess he's gonna go mid lane to Yigal, uh to try and get this Rift Herald down here. To me, Yigal here again. Air has not really hit that. I mean, he's get, getting to level 11, right? He's still missing the first item. Really needs to have a lot more time, and I think that's a holistic approach for the second game for FPX. Just time. Buy as much time as possible. You get a couple plates for your gal in the mid lane, who has also opted into the crown. So a little bit more defensive style from your gal in the mid lane on the Azir, as uh, not playing a defensive style is Shun, as he takes a third invade onto Halya, or maybe even Ooh. top lane gank. Top lane gank, very well. well I was going to say it could be so difficult, but um, when you half health a champion with one ability and Ooh, then the have set up like this, yeah, I don't think. Oh, the all out. Oh, on a minute. Okay, nope. buys a little time, but yeah, it looked cool. Did not end yeah. cool. That's one of those moments where you kind of feel like you had flash on the side. Too. I've, you know, because I've played a fair amount. I had to test it. Champions kit's really fun. It's absurdly mm -hmm. broken. Uh, even still on thirteen point one, to be honest with you, despite what you're seeing from uh, result here in the LPL. But uh, that's one of those things. You have no ghost, right? The W was great to stop the. Uh, the ultimate from Shun, but at the end of the day, you just don't have the health bar, especially after yeah. Bin decides to half help you with one ability. Uh, again, getting uh, broken by some of those tank busting pits is kind of just what it does. As Kat ticks over to level 11, just came back with that Rod of Ages, so he's on his way to a scaling haven. And one of the most broken parts about. Uh, or well, very, very overpowered. I should use more pro professional <laughs> lingo. I like that. Uh, like on, on the row is, of course, the, the additional level it grants you once it's stacked up, right? You hit level 11 around this time most games, right? Unless you're having a really, really unfortunate game in pro play. Mm. Within those 10 minutes, it's pretty easy to get to like level 14, level 15. Okay. And the thing about <laughs> the row is it gives you 100% of a level. It's not just flat XP it gives you. It's <laughs> if you are 80% of the way to level 14, and you tick over, you will now be 80% uh, uh, of the way to level 50. So nice. It's it's just, yeah, it's absurd. It's so much XP and uh, mm. flat time that it buys you and gets you towards level 16 that you'll start seeing Cassidy's be level 16 and level and minute 25 in a game, level 26. Mm. And that's several minutes earlier than you used to see whenever Cassidy would come out as a bit of a niche counter pick, even when ahead. So imagine what it's like when it's even in a game like this. True where it's only down, what, a wave of XP. Sure, you're gal now, as this Herald gets started up. We'll get a lead in the bottom engage. side, but the engage comes through. Elk getting knocked up multiple times. Flashes over the wall, gets oh. out. They flank from Yagao with a double pushback, but it's not enough. They get the lock down here onto Hell Yeah, but they've already gotten Yagao. It's Shallow who's here for the front line. They've got LWX firing away. Bubble will connect, and it's just one kill. Give it over to FPX, but it is looking good. They're learning from game number one and utilizing this composition a lot better yeah definitely a lot more follow-up uh it's the key thing there for fpx and they're able to lock down Yigal who did his best to find that pretty threatening looking dive uh and shuffle in at first but flashes come out dashes come out dodges available you can see initial engage comes oh through. my the god turn is excellent <laughs> so many members are just immediately forced away but Yigal, he thinks he finds it how yet interrupts the dash i'm not sure how much further it would have gone and not enough members get clipped by the Emperor's Divide, and Yagao just drops, and from this point on, it's retreat, retreat, retreat for BLG, and even Bin, who, honestly, in situations like that, with how many members on top of him, should be happy to just let loose with the Death by a Thousand Cuts, with the Q, with the ultimate, mm -hmm. has to also flash away. So, positive fight for FPX, and again, it can only get better in theory. Cassadin is on his way to level 16. LWX will eventually hit three items, 
So BLG, <laughs> in a way, I don't want to say they're on a timer, but they're on a timer until things get really, really heated. I, I'm just saying, I think we're seeing an elk bull rider cosplay here. That man just dashed into four people on Illusion <laughs> and just said, come at me, bro. Uh, maybe hiding his head between his hands as his teammates are getting obliterated and he made it out alive. But in all actuality, that kind of aggression, that will lead to missteps and that will lead to capitalization by FPX. Now we're on to the third dragon of the game. Could be second for either one of these teams and care on the side lane, on the flank. We're trying to position here. Shun misses the engagement oh. and they have found care on the side here. Ben is in the pit still as now care comes across the bubble does connect in the big wombo combo the emperor's divide doesn't do too much and blg again are just getting wiped clean and care on the beautiful fpx casting it with the lula support on him and lwx firing these lasers they are coming to town here picking up momentum in this second game yeah it's super disjointed from blg on the opposite end as well fpx just clean house happily even though they lose one, they pick up three. Shun's engage goes a little bit wide, a little bit wonky on his part, but care, free reign. No lockdown on him at all. You'll see in the replay, he's always just constantly hunting on the flank. Go, Shun. I'm not sure. How he's looking for Hoya in the first place. You can see Bin kind of forced away in the pit there, and the BLG's end. It's just all about the tree. Yigal, I just don't feel like he would have found full up. I think he needs to yeah. readjust his way of thinking in this game. His first two skirmishes we've seen, they've been really about trying to find shuffles but i think he just needs to turn it the other way around talk about sitting back actually getting soldiers down to auto try and actually space out fpx if someone jumps on top of you emperors divide them back mentality is just on the opposite end of the spectrum here for blg mid laner but fpx on the return will pick up the dragon so they are now two for the good uh, themselves but we won't see a soul for a long while yet which is perfectly fine for fpx as they are Oh, yeah. Fine and dandy with the state of the game right now. They are not very far behind, if only 100 gold. They are getting scaled up for Care and LWX, and Care is really starting to find that confident stride on the Cassid in here towards as we press over in the mid game. And that itself is terrifying because it doesn't feel like BLG have found an answer just yet. And again, you know, it's it's a nightmare solo queue combo. <laughs> Right, Yumi, True. Kasante, Kassadin. Is it, I would have dodged this. This one. <laughs> this is an insta dodge. <laughs> this is an insta dodge. And like you say, I feel like BLG, you know, they have a couple of good tools, but even when, you know, Care could go Zonyas very easily on third item, and all of a sudden, you know, Shun's engages mean a lot less, right? You can no longer just shut Kassadin down for a couple of seconds by using the cease and desist. Your gals, you know, dives in, feel a lot more threatening. Care is a lot happier to go forward with a Yumi on his back if he knows he can just do something silly like R flash E and then Zonya straight off of it. Yeah. So options will eventually begin to dwindle for BLG. And they do have scaling options more through the side lanes, right? Than they do in the greater team fights. But we'll have to see how they decide to pilot it and how gold dead even and for a team with Cassidy and Zeri Yumi on it, that's as good as being 2,000, 3,000 gold up in my mind. It really is, and you're getting kind of the side lane focus now from FPX to clean things up. BLG is still trying to find picks to some extent, but they have group five members into the mid lane. But we, uh, as always, will continue to keep counting this scaling for FPX as Care slips his way down the backside of the fight. Elk immediately dashes. They're going straight into Care's waiting jaws. But do they find a flash from Care? They might get the engage from Shallow. <laughs> oh. Whippers Divide will not be it. The all out gets Elk out of the fight and kills him. Good. Uh, that's that's a pretty pretty dang good fight from FPX. I, honestly, the way they have been separating and serrating these fights has been incredible in game two. In a complete dissection of BLG. So many of these skirmishes. That does really make you wonder how BLG will find an angle. <laughs> As we continue on in this game, we was literally just talking about how options were kind of starting to dwindle. BLG though, get engaged on Elk, core focus, as he should be so many times out. Good flash from Care. Well, sorry, good flash from Elk, rather. Care's flash, mm -hmm. a little bit awkward to be fair. But the all-out can't be interrupted. So uh, you just see Elk get dragged to Narnia. There's not really much he can do. 71 HP tower in the mid lane. I'm sure someone on BLG will uh, come to claim their prize eventually. So let's talk a little bit about BLG's 
possibilities here because we've talked already about how the momentum is definitely moving in favor of FPX. But do you see an in for the 2 0 bin in the top lane who now just finished the Shadow Flame? Do you see anything for the Azir setup of this roster, even though he has just finished the Nashor's Tooth? And that kind of damage potential that comes with the catch out? The damage is definitely there, right? I don't think there's any question in that. It's just about what the OG are actually going to do because so far they've been trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with FPX before their strong point, and they've just been falling flat on their face. So mm -hmm. it's really hard to say at this point. Yagao as well has been, until that last fight, a little bit too aggressive with the Emperor's Divide as shifts in. Almost certainly, if he can stay back, then I think there's a lot more uh, options for them. I think just trying to play front to back, allow FPX to dive into you and see what you can get done at least once or twice. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Dragon Swords in one minute, that'll be their next best oh! opportunity. LWX got a really nice dodge at the last second there. That would have been a big catch by BLG, but they can't find it. And that just buys more time for FPX. We're looking at Seraph's Embrace now completed and evolved for care. He's uh, got a lot of pressure on him here, though. He needs to be a little bit careful, but does have the fruits right there to heal him up. And those two items are coming across the board. We got Force of Nature there for Shalahu, the top side. The it's starting to look uh, even more daunting as we get a couple of these item completions across the board. Yeah, less than 60 seconds before Care gets a full extra level, by the way. So uh, BLG, oh, wow. they're just pulling the trigger on this Baron. Two they items on Lucian, two items on Bin. They have to, I feel like. After this, the fights are going to get so much more difficult. Will they look for a turn? Oh my god, they, they can't try. find it. They keep trying to find the bubble combo with the ball break, but they can't find it. Shalahu getting dropped down. A lot of damage onto him, though, as BLG have stopped the Baron. Now they've let it reset, but they're right back onto it. FPX, it's Care stacking up these Rift Walks. See, over the goes. edge. Shouldn't miss as the end game, but he gets it on the Shalahu. He's not going to go down. Care in the back line. The Care is cleaning up house, yeah. and BLG will contest and take down Care, but lose everybody but Yagao, and the Baron was not worth it. No, it wasn't indeed, and uh, take a look at that. Care is going to be hitting level 16 soon because the rower just ticked over to free access to the backline blg were not watching their backs at all and they pay the price dearly the engage again it just falls short from shun it doesn't find hoya but even if he does Care. i'm not sure what he's looking for and whilst all of that is going on Care just finds his way on to on just finds himself a triple kill off of one ripple nasty stuff and sure Care comes very very uh close but at the end of the day, BLG just taking apart FPX. Now they're at the power point. There's not really too much more BLG in my mind can do. It just gets worse, Mazel. The stopwatch is there for care as well. We just saw the pop up. He's got to be very, very close to level 16. And it's an BLG. ocean soul. <laughs> it's just feels bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Observers are even going to let us watch him hit level 16 on the next wave. I thought we'd hit there, but he's got like 99%. You can see the XP bar. <laughs> there, <laughs> there we go 16. level 16 and uh care is officially online i think as well as a lot of the other members for fpx and blg i guess this is just what they want to do now they live in front of the baron pit hmm. shun cannot find a, a vault right. breaker to save his life but they have found how okay. and nope they didn't <laughs> it's a little bit of a where's waldo situation as the all out comes through <laughs> big emperor's divide but care again care is just too big. Bin does get the kill in the end. A trade back, but he will slowly but surely be dragged down as well as the rest of his team. On is the solo member left of BLG and Baron, all for the beholder of FPX. All right. You know what this smells like, Mazel? This smells like a game three. It does smell like a game three. This will be my first game three of the of the season. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's uh. Take a look back. It's just Shun looking for an engage, getting blown up, and then uh, Care doing this to Elf. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, not much to see there. Flash away almost certainly saved Bond's life, otherwise he would have died. As uh, Bin, unfortunately, the last man standing, as he is so many times for the LG. Eventually taken out by LWX. And I think takeaways for the LG, the lesson learned is don't blind Azir into Care if Kassadin <laughs> is available. I think that might be the uh, very hard slap on the wrist to learn. Mm. But FPX are rubbing their hands together, looking for a game three right now. 
I mean, this is just gonna be constant care with the support of yeah. Yumi kind of uh, leading the way here because I, I think, you know, Lila obviously a newer player for FTX coming up, but so are the rest of the members of FTX. And I think being on this Yumi to facilitate care, huge stuff. And Elk doesn't even exist anymore. He's in a different plane of existence. Ben might be as well, though. He's trying to ascend to Godhood right now, and he's getting so much damage. And BLG, do they find the kill back? Shallow, who's still so healthy. Care makes it out, and the all-out Cassante brings it back from the brink of destruction. A double kill for the top laner of FPX. Holy moly, BLG almost brought it back. I mean, it's a three for three in these circumstances. That's a win, but the towers are still going to drop. Tier two in mid and bot gone. Care still in the mid lane, uncontested, taking this mid lane tower. If on steps up too far forward, he will get rift walked on. Here's Bin. Bin is so big right now. He is, Bin is he really is. ridiculous in terms of damage, but is it enough? Like, you're facing one guy who is like 1v5ing these fights against three potential all carries for FPX. Poor Elf, man. It's just so uninteractive. But uh, it's all about Bin underneath the tower the whole time. Quadruple. Snip, snip. With another ultimate stack on top of it. Just so much work getting done. And Yagao slides in. Catches everybody with the Emperor's Divide. But it just feels like no one is quite dying at the very end until then with that Conquering Sands. But uh, in the end, it's all about the all-out Kasante. Uh, cleans uh, would you want to revise your fight? sentiment earlier? T tank who? Uh, Thank you. Well, tank in lane. I did say that. I know, I know. I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna underline it, but I know. I, I agree. It's not really. It's not really. It's, a tank, uh, it? it's like a, It does everything. It's, 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 it's like a. You know you know the, the good old classic meme, Mage Assassin, Bruiser, Witchcraft. <laughs> it's like now. Or, that's. You know, it's it's getting close, Cassante. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, definitely still seeing. He does have that threat, it just spikes. A little bit earlier than yeah, what we've seen. Yeah. Very happy to get on to backline members. Gotta get back to base. In isolation. Yeah, they do. They are getting out rotated. Just late, here, heavily leaving BLG. it open. Yeah, All I mean, right, Vin is on his way back here. You have Dragon coming up in about 20 seconds, but that'll be in him in mid lane taken out. BLG maybe just looking for some stragglers on the back end. But big question here, Jamada, and hopefully you can answer it. How do they even find care at this point? Like, how do they ensure they can shut down the 606 Cassidy with a Yumi on? Uh, all right, bear with me. Care has to turn his monitor off and then try and navigate. That's a, that's a good plan. That's a good plan. Yeah, I think other than that, it's going to be quite difficult. I think Care still has a stopwatch on. We're not going to see from the fight hunt anymore. So we'll uh, see. But the LG, they're definitely trying to contest still nonetheless. And with Yumi now permanently stuck to Care's back, yeah. Lila knows his place. <laughs> And where his new home is. It just continues Ooh. to get even harder to deal with. Though they oh will God, find him now. The wall. They find care. They don't get him. He goes over the wall again. They just can't kill him. And now they've overextended. As FPX move in, there's a beautiful Emperor's Divide. As Bin. Ooh, Bin is starting to do so much work here. He's scaling himself. But now he's against five members, four members. And now it's just gone for BLG. They tried so hard. And Shun has putting himself in line of fire so many times to come up with absolutely nothing. And FPX will take Dragon. They're even taking the base because of Winions. And right now, FPX in full control of game number two. And it's Ocean Soul in their back pocket now. So it goes from bad to worse for BLG. And Bin is just doing so much work. It's just not enough. At the end of the day, the Vault Breaker connects. You think the CC could be enough, but the Tidal Wave doesn't quite connect. And CC, care just long enough to find the finishing touches on the pick. Emperor's Divide comes through, it's big, and that's what really sets up Bin's advance, but the issue is Shun goes too far forward, he gets clipped, and Bin, you can just see he's by himself. Elk and Ona yeah. nowhere to be found near this team fight anymore. Not able to follow through with all of the extra dashes available. It, it's, it's just the, the miscommunication feels like the dysfunction for BLG is kind of showing through in the second game, right? Like, yes, there was a bit of an awkward situation going over the wall for that engage, but Elk and Ona were Having used their ultimates early, still full health and, and pretty much resources ready to go. So it's just a bit of separation that fight overextension from BLG that ended up being a big mistake for them. And now, even though we were talking about like, how do they find care? How do they do this? They've tried multiple times. It's not happening. I don't know if it will. Nope. And uh, 
will care have as long as on this base is the big question. So if he does, it's just gonna get worse. And uh, I know everybody's rabbit on but uh, he just picked it up, so it's and the it's gotten worse. There's again, so much BLG. damage. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't forget, because the archangel changes as well, it's not the passive. It's not ability haste anymore. So uh Rapidons, it's one of the highest AP builds in the game is now Q3. Just goes a bit wide. And, you know, we spoke about Asante being a tank. He is. He also has Ocean so far. So, good luck. What is DLG happening right now? Shun is completely yeah. on the other side. Elk, I, he's dodging out. They have to re-engage yeah. now to the team. The final chapter is coming across. Care is just untouched, and so is maybe the rest of uh, FDX <laughs> as the bubble comes through. They get one back, but uh, Care, Shallow, who and the rest of the squad <laughs> are just chasing down Shun. He tries to get the bait, but that's it. That'll be game clean one. It should be by oh, FPX oh as on buys his time. Minions pouring down the mid lane. FPX have made this a series. Save your KDA, Yon. Don't go and defend the base. You will die. Almost certainly FPX. Super dominant. A little bit disjointed. Well, I was going to say disjointed there from the ultimate. That's been disjointed for the past couple of team fights. But what has been certainly very coherent is FPX's ability to consistently split BLG apart in this game. We're going to game yeah. number three. Really, really good stuff. And the scaling composition from FPX wins through in the end. And it's care on your screen. Yeah, so much work. that smile. He knows. He knows. Uh, huge stuff from FPX has come back into the series. Also, just not giving up in a fight that is both these teams first series win of the split i think it is important that this goes to three games and that we see everything there is to see from both these teams that they have been brought the distance again fpx opting into a very similar composition in game two but trading out that cast and i think it it definitely had something to do with the second game but yeah it's it's that adaptation from fpx in the series and the switch up of sides that i feel like really played to their benefit yeah i i totally agree with you and now side select again is going to make make a, a huge world of difference right i think for blg it's a lot of the same stuff bin is being bin bin is winning top great elk and om did not win the bottom lane matchup and that time it felt like it played into a huge swing of pressure for fpx because no longer did they have to deal with this very fed ad carry and top laner it was just the threat of gwen and yeah. the looming pressure of Cassadin hitting level 16 with a Yumi and with the backup of everything else going on in FPX's team composition, it was too much to deal with. There was too many years available to FPX through Yumi, Zeri, and Cassante to back up one of the oldest mid laners in the game. Yeah. I don't know what it, to say other than it was just a bit of a team cap composition. Yeah. And I think you, you can talk and laud Yigao for his Azir, right? He's, he's a tried and true Azir player. Questioning it in this situation, especially when we yeah. did see such an outside movement from him so far in this season, and to have more of a focus in lane, where actually we didn't see him get much in lane uh, against the scaling pick that it felt like was just going to win out in the end anyway. So I definitely want to see that change up for sure and reignite the fire that is the top lane of BLG between Shun, Yagao, and Ben. Yeah, no, they they need it, right? I think, uh, like you God said, Yigao... bid, my God! Yeah, Yigao, no slouch on the Azir. It was just those early team fights which weren't exactly being operated the best uh, by him. But, yeah, been dealing the most damage in the game by pretty far margins, well, 5,000, 6,000 damage almost. It's, it's a tough and frustrating loss for BLG, to be honest with you. But, of course, they still have one more game. It's not like it's series over, but... Yeah. We wanted to see from today a clean series from BLG. It wasn't even particularly clean in game number one either mm -hmm. to be, you know, super critical, right? So I think for BLG, a little bit of recollection.